In this video, we're gonna take a little look at different ways that you can start to measure your body mass. Um, and if you're not feeling comfortable with using machines such as these, um, then these types of scales, then we can start to look at how you measure your uh, body using a tape measure. So there's different ways that you can start to do this. You can have uh, relatively inexpensive scales. I wouldn't recommend that you go for the spring wound. I would definitely go for electronic. Make sure that you've got a hard surface. So this particular unit here is on a, a piece of wood. So you want a hard floor. And if you haven't got a hard floor, then just a small board uh, like that to be able to put your scale on so that it doesn't dig into carpet. is a really good way to be able to look at it. And when you're starting to look at your new fitness regime, you need to get some numbers. You want to get data. And data is the key thing as you start to go through any kind of health and fitness journey. You want to know where you're starting and you want to have an idea of where you want to be able to get to. So the scales are a fantastic way to be able to do this, especially when they do electrical impedance and they send a small pulse through the body and it measures your bone mass, your muscle mass, your visceral fat, as well as your subcutaneous fat. So subcutaneous fat is the fat underneath the skin and the visceral fat is the fat in and around your organs, which is obviously the very unhealthy fat. It's still unhealthy to have a lot of excess body fat, but it's the visceral fat, which is uh, one of the biggest killers that you can see, or can't see, should I say. Um, the scales are super easy to use. They're normally based on your age and your height, and then it will then give you a reading of muscle mass, bone mass, water, if it does it, uh, water content in the body, um, it will tell you your visceral fat, it will tell you your, um, your fat mass, so your combined fat percentage, and normally it will give you a BMI rating as well. So a really good way to be able to track and look at what's making up your numbers, because it's not the weight that counts. You can have somebody which is of, um, so someone such as myself, six foot tall, uh, there could be another one of me here, uh, six foot tall, but be of a different um, body mass, so they could be slightly higher fat percentage um, than me, and we could potentially weigh the same, but we would have a different shape. So you have to look at um, when people start talking about body fat versus muscle mass, and people, a lot of people say, oh, well, muscle is heavier than fat, and that's just not the case. A kilo of muscle, still weighs the same as a kilo of fat. However, fat takes up a much bigger area. So if that was a kilo of fat and that's a kilo of muscle, the two, this is tighter, it's more functional, it does something for you and it burns energy, whereas fat will keep you and insulate you. So keep you warm and insulate you. When you start to look at these types of scales, they range in price from 50 pounds uh, for a relatively good one through to thousands of pounds. So you tend to find this particular type here, which would normally be in a gym, because it comes in two parts and it's got a little printout that goes with it. This particular one, um, it has handles that come up and you hold the handles and you go through it. So different types, depending on what your budget is. However, there are people that don't like to have a measurement done on scales. However, so what you can do then is you can get a tape measure. Now, I don't recommend the type of tape measure that you would get for building because it just, it's just not gonna work. <coughs> type of tape measures like this, the cloth ones, super easy. This one, it's, I think it's a matter of pounds from the internet, um, and super easy to use, and it locks in place so that you know where you are. And there's several key places that we want to be able to measure on the body and measure them once a week. So the key thing is that if you don't like going onto scales, you don't want to know what's happening uh, within your body to measure your muscle mass and your fat mass, your bone density and your visceral fat, that's absolutely fine. Then we can measure it from the outside. Some people like to go on clothes feeling. So you might have a particular item of clothing that you really want to get back into and it just seems like miles away. However, you keep trying it on and eventually you fit into it, therefore you know you've lost weight. So that's one way to do it, and some people are quite happy with that, which is fine. Another way, as I mentioned, these are all about data. By taking body measurements, you are equally getting lots and lots of data, and there are several key points on the body that we need to measure to be able to 
ensure that we get those data points so we get those happy feelings. So, areas. You're going to measure halfway from the top of your shoulder here, so where you've got the clavicle, your, your bone here at the top, all the way down to um, your elbow. So halfway between is roughly here. So you're going to measure both sides with a tape measure very quickly just to go around both sides here and here. So left arm, right arm. Then you want to measure around the chest. So you will measure oops, around the chest from the back all the way across the front. Now you don't get bigger, you just hold it nicely and therefore you can then measure there. So that's right across the front of the chest. Then you want to measure around the belly button. So as that comes through, cross it over and then onto your belly button. And then you want to measure the largest part around your hips. So literally just around the hips. And then you're gonna measure from the top of the iliac crest, the hip bone. So the top here, down to your knee, halfway is roughly here. So if you've got your hamstring, it's where the hamstring starts to dip in slightly at the back there. Just standing normally, and then you just put the tape measure around and measure where you are. Don't put it really tight, just hold it just quite normally, just so it just touches the skin. Obviously when you're doing this, the least amount of clothing that you're wearing, obviously the better, uh, because you're gonna to get to the, the proper measurement against the skin. So that's around each arm, around the chest, around the belly button, so around your waist, around your hips, so the largest part of the hips, and then halfway between the top of your hip bone through to the knee, and then you're gonna measure around that point. That gives you some really good data points that you can keep measuring. And each week you'll start to see changes and you'll start to see the benefit of either more exercise. If you're trying to bulk up, then you'll start to see that you should get a difference in definition. If you're trying to lose weight, then you should start to see those numbers starting to come down. Um, this is always a, a big one to be able to watch because it gets past a certain point. And then obviously there is a more health risks and more health complications if your belly starts to get too large. Um, so more than you're looking at a lot of visceral fat, and that's how we start to get really, really dangerous. When we start to look at these scales, they give you a number and they tell you an overall weight number. Now you have to be really careful with that weight number because it's not the whole answer. The answer is actually in what makes up that number. It's like doing a maths exam and just showing your answer and not showing your workings out. The workings out are the most important part. Your muscle mass, your water percentage, your bone mass, your fat mass, your visceral fat, and your fat percentage. That's the really important thing. So if you are regularly tracking, try and use the same scales because that's really important because therefore you know that you're tracking it against the same information and therefore the same data points are coming through. The other piece you need to be really careful of is that you, as you start to write things down, that if you start to see that actually my water mass has gone down or actually my fat mass has gone up or down, then that could be because of your water content. As you have more water or more carbohydrates, that can affect um, the water that's stored in the body. And therefore that can give you a slightly false reading against the scales. But as long as you're trying to weigh yourself at the same time each week, doing it regularly, using the same data points, you should be absolutely fine. There should be no issues and fluctuations. And if you are worried that things are starting to fluctuate on the scales, always go to your handy backup of a tape measure and measure and go to your measurements. If you're still coming down, then you're still doing the right things. If your overall numbers are coming down, then you're on to an absolute winner. When you're starting to use these machines and you're starting to use uh, a tape measure to be able to monitor your weight, then it's all about consistency. And that's the absolute key thing. If you're trying to lead a healthier lifestyle, to do more, to eat better, to eat cleaner, 
be consistent in it. If you, all you want to do is replace one thing to start with, pick the biggest thing that you're looking at and then replace that and then go on to the next thing and the next thing and introduce habits and create habits, should I say, one at a time. If you try and go big bang, then sometimes that's too much. Some people it really works well for, other people it doesn't and they end up getting incredibly frustrated and therefore they'll start to give up because they don't see the benefits and they just find it too hard. So it's about finding what works for you. What works for you won't necessarily work for someone else, won't work for me. So you have to find your own way, but you have to try different ways to be able to do it. Be consistent, use the same equipment when you're doing it so that you end up using the same data points. If you want, you can track your food as well. So by tracking your food, and equally by tracking your exercise, so MyFitnessPal enables you to track your food, enables you to track exercise. You can use things like Strava you, on your mobile phone. You can track the exercise that you're doing as well. Um, watches, Fitbits, Garmin's, all sorts of different things. There are different ways to be able to keep uh, fitter and keep a track on it, obviously with your um, Apple iWatch as well. Or Apple iWatch? Apple Watch. Um, use them but don't necessarily rely on them. Ultimately, it's about how you feel. And that's the most important thing. If you're starting to find that you're getting more energy and you're feeling that much better from it, then that's an absolute winner. If you're finding that you can run around and that actually you're not getting as tired as you used to, that's an absolute winner. If you can get through the, the afternoon and not feel really sleepy, that's a winner. And as you start to see results, and that's the key thing is seeing results, right? We all want to feel better, but ultimately we want to get the results that we've got. Doing goals and writing goal, down your goals, and we'll come into that in another session, is an absolute key thing to being able to know where you start and where you end up so that you know that you've got a route to be able to get there.